Look, no matter where you're at in starting or growing your business, there will always be challenges. Like, where do you go for help? Hmm, the internet? Your peers? Your friends? It's just information. Lots of information. Introducing the Center for Business Growth and Innovation at the University of Northern Iowa, providing you with the right resources to fit your specific needs. There's free one-on-one -on -one consulting and advice, free business intelligence and market research, strategic growth planning, free interactive webinars, capital opportunities, subsidized office space, networking and learning events, web resources, and so much more. There's even a platform to voice your opinion about doing business in Iowa. Our team philosophy has always been to listen to the entrepreneurial community. Imagine what we can do to fill the gaps in their needs. Then create shareable and collaboratively driven solutions leveraging our technology and university assets. Annually, we evaluate how we've done and strive to scale those resources that are effective to maximizing economic impact for Iowa entrepreneurs. The Center for Business Growth and Innovation, serving Iowa entrepreneurs and small business owners across the state. Contact us today to start working on your business.
smarter than that. Yeah. I need to be smarter than the technology. Uh, I should have known to expect an Octopress welcome. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate that very much. Uh, my name is Rob Williams. I'm with the University of Northern Iowa. Uh, go Panthers! The uh, newly renamed Center for Business Growth and Innovation. Uh, and we're so excited to have all of you here with us tonight. You're in for a real treat. Um, just a little bit of background about Dream Big Grow Here. Uh, when we started this program, uh, and, and really Dream Big Grow Here is, is a two-part process. So there's an online component, and then there's an in-person component. Many of you uh, were witnessing that earlier today, when our five industry finalists were delivering their um, presentations to win the $5,000 business grant, um, and ultimately to come here to pitch one more time for $10,000. Uh, but what I want to do is talk a little bit about the online portion, the portion that you may not know a whole lot about. Uh, what happened uh, was online, we accepted entrepreneurs and business owners from all across the state to share with us their business dream, whether that was uh, starting a new business or taking their business to that next level. Uh, at the end of the day, we had 119 dreams submitted, every one of which was amazing. Throughout that process, uh, those 109 small business owners and entrepreneurs competed online for votes to be one of the select few to be joining us tonight. And uh, at the end of the day, over the course of two weeks, the website saw one million page views, 75,000 online votes were cast, and there were 3,000 comments of support, of love, of excitement for these entrepreneurs and uh, you can still find those on the website today. They're incredibly moving. Um, so what we ended up with were the 30 uh, presenters who um, pitched earlier today. Uh, as I mentioned now, we have our finalists. And uh, without further ado, what I want to do now is uh, introduce our master of ceremonies. Hey, guys. Can we shut the door? It's kind of hard, I think. Maybe. Oh. All right, well, we're just gonna, we're just going to flow with it. Um, and now I lost my spot. Uh, I want to welcome Doug Wagner with iHeartRadio to the stage to take the, things over um, and make our big, big announcements. Please join me in welcoming him. Okay, I've got a wireless mic. Can you hear me okay or no? Okay, fabulous. Now, in the back especially, because there are a lot of people who've worked very, very hard and tirelessly in order to get to this point, I want to make sure that everybody's attention is up here, not for me, but for the innovators, the people who have sacrificed their time, money, effort, family, in a lot of cases, uh, in order to make it here tonight. Uh, my name is Doug Wagner. I'm host of The Morning Show on News Radio 600 WMT in Cedar Rapids, heard throughout five states and over uh, the internet at iHeartRadio, and uh, I'll be the MC for this afternoon's activities. But before we get going with the presentation of the awards, we first want to recognize the tremendous sponsors of today's event, which we will do right now. Renew Rural Iowa for sponsoring our ag innovation, innovation industry. VentureNet Iowa for sponsoring our manufacturing bioscience and information technology, as well as providing expert coaching for each of our great 30 Dream Big Grow Here finalists. I don't know where that's coming from. The Iowa Bankers Association as well. Advance Iowa, Viridian Credit Union, Iowa Source Link, the University of Northern Iowa Center for Business Growth and Innovation, and uh, they're doing a live stream for finals, so this is not only their people periscoping this, but they're also uh, doing this live stream over YouTube right now. So. Now the time we've all been waiting for, with everybody's attention, we'll have the big announcement of our winners. We'll start out with the Ag Innovation Envelope. And the winner, and by the way, if the winners would come up here to the stage, come up here to the stage and uh, we'll be over here, we'll have a photograph with Mr. Williams right over here, so, all right. The winner for the Ag Innovation is AgriSync from West Des Moines.
All right. The winner for hospitality and restaurants, Fresh Mediterranean Express LLC from Waukee. Yeah. wholesale category and the winner is farm table delivery Harlan Iowa Revenue category. By the way, thank you for your attention. This is awesome. The pre revenue category, the winner is K2 Medical <laughs> Alerts from Muscatine. Someone's excited. Come on over here. Use the steps. You have medical in your name. So you don't have to <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Way to go. Congratulations. Oh my gosh. What a journey, right? Absolutely. Thank you. Picture time over here. Oh, this one? Oh, this one. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Ready to go? There you go. Good job. Thank you. All right. The professional services category, the winner is Upcraft Club from Des Moines. Manufacturing Bioscience IT. The winner from Cedar Falls is Howe Factory. couple of minutes the judges will begin hearing the pitches from these companies they've got five thousand dollars now they're going for an additional ten thousand dollars in prize grant money so it's my pleasure to introduce our esteemed judges from the statewide judging, pa judging panel judges please stand as I introduce you Sandy Ehring is the administrator of Renew Rural Iowa Sandy has, spent, Sandy has spent 30 years moving the needle on entrepreneurship through her various roles in economic development. Thank you for your service. Paul Kinghorn. <laughs> Paul is the director for the UNI Center for Business Growth and Innovation. He has over 20 years of business consulting experience and has held senior management positions in a number of startups and early stage business ventures. Megan Milligan. is the president and CEO of the Iowa Center for Economic Success. She's also had entre entrepreneurship experience owning a consulting firm and a barbecue restaurant. I didn't know that. <laughs> barbecue. Throughout her career, Megan has been instrumental in leading organizations that support economic independence and development in Iowa. Lisa Shimkat. 
Lisa is the state director for the small for Iowa Small Business Development Center. She has worked with startup and small business owners for over 10 years. Her work with owners has earned her multiple awards, including the SBA's SBDC Excellence in Innovation Award and SBDC State Star. Deb Vandergast. <laughs> Deb is the owner of Tipton Adaptive Daycare and the past winner of Dream Big Grow Here. Congratulations. Deb knows what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur, and she brings a very personal understanding of the kind of things that the people are going to be up here pitching. She brings a very personal knowledge to that here to the panel. Brian Waller. <laughs> Brian Waller is president of the Technology Association of Iowa. He's known and respected by many across the state as a collaborator, a connector, and a cheerleader for the Iowa startup and entrepreneurial community. There are a number of these people I have welcomed onto my show on News Radio 600 WMT. It's nice to actually see your faces and, and put that. Usually when I open up a microphone and start talking, I don't see anybody because it's radio. So it's nice to see so many faces here. So here we are at this point. Uh, we have a truly amazing, amazing group of judges here. I'd like everybody to give all of them another round of applause, please. And thank them for the show. Now, for the big event, would ask that everybody who has a conversation going in the back, if you would like to continue the conversation, that you move it to the hallway, because your attention should be up here on stage. Each one of these startups, each one of these businesses, each one of these entrepreneurs is going to make, be making a six-minute presentation for $10,000, on top of the $5,000 that they've already won. So they deserve your complete attention, if you would, please. This year we also have a special People's Choice Award which will be given by you, the audience, in our true Dream Big Grow Here populist spirit. You'll be able to cast your vote during our judges deliberation period from the official EntreFest conference app guidebook. Simply navigate to the polling section if you're going to participate, okay? Now, without further delay, we're going to welcome AgriSync, representing the Ag Innovation Industry Contest, sponsored by Renew Rural Iowa, to kick things off. Good evening, my name is Casey Neiman. I'm the founder of AgriSync, where we're building the first mobile customer service solution built specifically for the ground up for agriculture. Today, 7.3 billion people need to eat, and a few lucky ones in the back will also chase that with a beer. <laughs> and most people are betting on big data and telematics from an ag innovation standpoint to deliver that food and fiber that we depend on every day. At AgriSync, we're betting on the human element the connection between a farmer and their trusted advisor to be the boots on the ground to get things done. If we think about what's happening in agriculture, agriculture is growing more and more complex. From a day-to-day -day perspective, farmers are facing more and more complexity on the farm. Most of these challenges are visual in terms of equipment optimization, telematic systems, in-cab diagnostics, and at AgriSync, we're focused on the visual nature of providing real-time support to farmers and advisors. When we started to build the first remote support solution for agriculture, we wanted to take the best that we could from good ideas like Skype, we wanted to take a network approach similar to LinkedIn, and we wanted to connect that to a ticketing-based system similar to Zendesk, and then deliver that to a mobile platform where our farmers and trusted advisors live and work every day. When we think about our customer audience, farmers, their primary and most precious commodity is time. For farmers, we help them reduce downtime by having one-touch access to experts who are otherwise miles away from the farm in minutes from their smartphone. We also allow them to get a return on technology that they've already purchased. For advisors, we allow them to serve more farmers more often with less cost. 
When we think about our average customer, the CEO at Hagee Manufacturing, one of our paid beta participants, said that each time they go and do a farm gate visit, it costs on average over $500 and takes two and a half hours. With AgriSync, they can get a positive return on investment if they do just one remote, remote support solution on an annual basis. We deliver a mobile first uh, cloud-based solution that was built for farmers and their advisors. So we allow farmers through a simple free app to have one touch access to a network of advisors that represent multiple companies that they depend on every day. We make it easy to use, and from a virality perspective, we make it very easy to share so that farmers can invite their advisors into the system, and likewise, advisors can invite farmers into, the, into AgriSync in order to deliver a better customer service experience. Our special sauce is a video-first support experience. So again, we allow the advisor to see what the farmer sees in real time, allowing them to validate diagnosis, and oftentimes, bring average time to resolution to less than 10 minutes through AgriSync. We also capture the voice of the farmer through a simple uh, survey at the conclusion of each session. We allow basically the farmer to confirm how the, was their issue resolved and how the advisor did. We allow those advisors again to deliver more engagement with less travel uh, as they go through their day. And then we roll up all of those service tickets to a team dashboard. So it's not just the mobile advisors who are out there across multiple counties and agriculture serving their farmers. We roll that up to a team customer service dashboard that brings visibility, it brings accountability, and benchmarking to the way that they're serving their customers. Our target customers are the service providers in agriculture. And if you think about the folks that we're serving, they're often mobile. They tend to be revenue generating. They're out selling seed, chemical, and fertilizer. They tend to be trusted by that farmer and they tend to have some local domain knowledge and they tend to uh, fall into one of these categories which we intelligently organize inside of our application. From a service perspective, our software as a service model is simple. We provide a free service for farmers. They can use this service to request and ask for help from any number of advisors from any number of companies. We monetize our service on the advisor side, whether it be an individual advisor or a team organization. And we allow that advisor to do unlimited support sessions and a ticketing-based solution that keeps them organized and on task and making sure that from a mobile perspective, they know when they have new service alerts coming in. We've been fortunate to be able to be first in market. So we have an opportunity to be the first and best remote support solution specifically for agriculture. We've had the good fortune of having four great paid beta customers, the support from Iowa Economic Development Loan, and a great pipeline of customers that are coming into a great software as a service margin business. Every good team uh, needs great people, and we've been blessed with a great team of developers, of marketing people, of interns, and I've also been blessed with a great partner, Jared Westfall, my wingman who's led a venture-backed firm before. He's CEO of Purple Wave. He's also a lawyer and an ag uh, person by trade. For myself, I grew up on a farm in Kansas. I spent 14 years at Microsoft, a few years at Syngenta, received an executive MBA from the University of Iowa, and we want to grow our team. If we have the good fortune to win tonight, we want to hire a new sales coordinator, and if you happen to know agriculture and you want to work with farmers and their trusted advisors, call me or catch me afterwards. Again, most of us had the great opportunity to eat today, and we're thankful that a farmer and his trusted advisor worked hard to put food on our table. At, at AgriSync, our goal and our mission is to support that farmer and their trusted advisor. And we would ask that if you know a farmer or somebody that supports a farmer, please share what we're doing at AgriSync with them. I want to thank the good folks at the Dream Big Grow Here opportunity for this opportunity to present. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wonderful presentation. Uh, now, for Entrefest, I'm curious, how many people, this is uh, their first Entrefest, raise your hands, please. Wow, that's impressive. How many have been to two Entrefests so far? Okay, let's go with three at this point. Three Entrefests? Okay, we're getting to the point where I can't see all the way to the back, so if you've been to four Entrefests, please clap your hands or whistle or something. Okay. Five Entrefests? Six Entrefests. Woo! We're getting low here. Seven Entrefests? 
Yeah. 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 And then, the, the, yeah, the next one is, what's the answer to the, what's the sound of one hand clapping? Eight ultra fest? There you go. Congratulations. This is a fresh Mediterranean fresh. Working on some technical issues, getting everything taken care of here uh, here at Hotel B. Trout. This is uh, between here, the Angler Theater, where we did a remote broadcast of my show between 5 and 9 this morning, and the Sheraton and Sherrod. This has just been phenomenal today. Uh, I can't imagine what it's like to be, be here for three consecutive days and, and take part of this. Seth Godin is going to wrap everything up tomorrow afternoon with the keynote address. I had the opportunity to speak to him uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, remarkable. I know that you're going to be very blessed by his words, and uh, in turn, he's going to be blessed by the spirit that you poured into this place. Without further delay, please welcome me and join me in welcoming Fresh Mediterranean Express, representing your hospitality, restaurants, industry category. <laughs> Mediterranean Express. I'm Jenny and I, I have 10 years of management experience and I have a Bachelor of Arts degree um, from the University of Northern Iowa. And I'm Hassan. I have a Bachelor's degree in Finance from UNI and 10 years of experience in restaurant management. We opened our place in May 2004 in Waukee, Iowa. And here is a short video um, an overview video of our restaurant concept. <laughs> years ago on the subway when I was living in New York. We were at the 59th Street station in Brooklyn and he decided to strike up a conversation with me. Since I've known him all the way back to our first date, he's told me about his dream of owning a Mediterranean cafe. With Fresh Mediterranean Express, we're able to bring... Get off the Wi-Fi. Enjoy the box as well while you wait. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have some for everybody. <laughs> on the subway when I was living in New York. We were at the 59th Street station in Brooklyn, and he decided to strike up a conversation with me. Since I've known him, all the way back to our first date, he's told me about his dream of owning a Mediterranean cafe. With Fresh Mediterranean Express, we're able to bring the flavors of the Mediterranean to our customers in a casual cafe setting. Having the opportunity to serve our community 
and put in uh, the smiles on our customer faces as they take that first bite, it is just amazing. We work with our suppliers to ensure the highest quality of fruits, vegetables, spices, and meats are used in our kitchen. Our cafe is unique. From our open concept kitchen layout, which allows customers to experience the fresh food preparation process, to lively international music and decor, all aspects lend to an authentic dining experience. Each of our sauces, dips, and dressings are made daily in-house. We currently offer seven different sauces and homemade hummus. Growing up in a small village in Morocco, I personally understand the challenges of not having access to education. Here at Fresh Mediterranean Express, our mission is to support literacy programs here at home and abroad. So come on in and let Fresh Mediterranean Express bring the flavors of the Mediterranean to you and your family. So prior to opening, I had the opportunity to work with the international marketing class at UNI, and we had a food tasting event. So it was an outstanding uh, turnout, and we had received some really positive feedback. So this is where it all began. Um, basically, we took an empty space, and we turned it into an, an open concept kitchen with bright colors to become what it is today. So site selection, why Waukee, Iowa? Well, in the last 15 years, it's actually tripled in population. The median age is 31, allowing us to reach out to that targeted millennial population. The, um, it's a very affluent community. There uh, is a 50% um, individuals with bachelor's degree. And then the household income is 77,000 compared to a much lower state average. There are 162 restaurants in a five mile radius but only 13 in Waukee, and in the entire Des Moines metro, there are five Mediterranean restaurants, but no other fast, casual Mediterranean restaurants. So the food, it's just that good. We are excited that City View Magazine named us the best Mediterranean restaurant in the entire Des Moines metro for 2015. Financials. Customer spending in store has increased by 30% since last year with an $18.11 ticket and 53% increase in gross sales from last year. Looking into the future, we just started a distribution par pro partnership uh, for our hummus throughout the state of Iowa. We're growing our catering services and moving into more events. The fast casual concept has increased by 550% uh, in the last, uh, since 1999 actually, um, and fast food has grown at a much more stagnant rate. So, uh, the question remains, what are we going to do with the funds? We're planning on purchasing a mobile unit, which will help us, will, will be used as a marketing tool to raise brand awareness, educate the consumers about our product, uh, additional revenue streams, and on the ground market research. On the social, from the social and economic aspect, we are creating jobs in the, in the community. Uh, we're currently employing about seven uh, people, and we're also supporting uh, international and uh, local nonprofit organizations. So, if you're in Milwaukee, make sure to stop in and get yourself the Euro. Thank you so much. Another good presentation. Thank you so much for your attention up here to the people because, again, they put in a lot of time and effort in order to put these presentations together, these pitches the judges are making their decision. These uh, six winners you see up here have already won $5,000. They're pitching now for $10,000 in addition to that. 
We now welcome Howe Factory to pitch on behalf of our Manufacturing Bioscience Information Technology Industry category, sponsored by VentureNet Iowa. Howe Factory, come to the stage, please. In a very real way, How Factory got its start at Entrefest, right here. This is where I realized that I could build a business solving the problems for the manufacturing companies that I'd worked with throughout my career. See, I got my start working at the University of Northern Iowa, where I helped commercialize a virtual reality technology that trained industrial workers in manufacturing. And working with companies like Honda, Case New Holland, Boeing, and hundreds others in my career, I saw a problem that they just weren't solving. You see, every company understands that they need to standardize their work practices and capture knowledge, but the tools that they were using were hopelessly outdated. They weren't taking advantage of modern technologies like tablets inside of the smart factories that were popping up everywhere. So I talked to my co-founder, Kenny Stevenson, into moving to Iowa from Florida in January. <laughs> and the reason is because Kenny built a multi-million dollar training center, and his company trained 10,000 workers in his career. Together, we really understand manufacturing and processes. And we know that for a factory worker, a binder full of standard operating procedures is their Bible. But does this look like the best place to keep critical knowledge? Binders get lost, outdated, and they're terrible at communicating, training. 25% of the manufacturing workforce is retiring in the next 10 years. And companies are at risk of losing critical know-how. And when no workers don't know how to do their jobs correctly, you end up with product failures, recalls, and even injury. I love that picture. <laughs> well, my co-founders, Kenny, Nicole, and I, we found a better way. It's called How Factory. We're revolutionizing how companies create, use, and update standard operating procedures, work instructions, and training because we're making it simple. I want to show you How Factory with one of our reference customers, David. David works for the Center of Manufacturing Excellence, and he trains workers, and he has to get his team up to speed on a new suite of CNC machines. So David creates his processes in this training in How Factory using a drag and drop interface that optimizes the photos instantly for him. He can even add videos which he couldn't put in the binder before. And we've included a text editor so he didn't have to open other software to do his job. But most importantly, what differentiates How Factory from other tools is that we understand the key is enabling communication with your workforce. Key frontline people can notify David when there's a change or a problem so that he, they can update the process in an instant including photos and videos in that update. And assigning work is really easy. All you do is drag a step or a process to a worker, and when they log in for the first time, they have the most accurate, up-to-date information right at their fingertips. But How Factory doesn't stop there, because when David buys a new piece of equipment, manufacturers of that equipment can upload their operating instructions to How Factory, and David can download those into his system. How Factory keeps David's critical knowledge up to date and distributed across his entire team in an instant. And we make it easy to get started. Starting at just $40 per month, but for most manufacturers, it's $250 per month, per
per site and it scales up with their usage. But we've also included a revenue sharing program for the hundreds of manufacturer, manufacturing vendors who already sell inside of those companies. There are 150,000 small to medium sized manufacturers in the United States and they spend $4 billion a year on compliance, rework and training. We started just four months ago with three reference customers and we've grown to over 200 beta signups since then. Kenny and I know manufacturing and we know processes and we know that great processes matter in many industries, not just manufacturing. They are important to finance, education, and healthcare, but we're focused on manufacturing where we're launching to. It's because of our network, who we know, the 130 customer discovery interviews, and our reference customers that we're confident that we'll grow to a $4.7 million company in just three years and a $12 million company in five years. We're gonna be at cash flow positive in October of 2016. And we're making a difference right here in Iowa. Companies like Ecolips, where you have their, their chapstick right there, environmentally friendly chapstick, are our beta sites. They need to enable a massive generational transfer of knowledge, and with How Factory, they can do so. Thousands of companies in Iowa. And we're creating 80 jobs over the next five years, high tech, high paying jobs, right here in Iowa. And we've got a track record of success. Graduates of the Iowa Startup Accelerator, we were acknowledged with a $50,000 investment right on stage. The first ever company from Iowa to make this tech crunch disrupt startup battlefield this year. 200 signups in the last two months, actually 100 in the last two weeks. And we're surpassing our revenue forecast already. We're gonna use the money because we need to make sure that the power of this technology is in the pockets of our workers. So we need to develop a dedicated native app on iOS and for uh, Android. And that is How Factory. Thank you very much. We are changing companies through know-how. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Ready for our next presenter, I want to recognize a couple of folks uh, who've been working. You know, there are a lot of people, including Rob, who've been working this whole thing and will be working through. Uh, Trevor was uh, emceeing earlier today. Trevor, is, he's doing timing right now. Please stand up for a round of applause. And uh, Chelsea with the technology. None of this would happen despite the internet. The internet glitch was not Chelsea's fault. So, Chelsea, where are you? Stand up, Chelsea. Thank you very much. That's because all of you are periscoping while we're already live feeding this. <laughs> Next up, representing our pre-revenue industry, please give a round of applause for K2 Medical Alerts as they come on stage. didn't know that you or your loved one had a serious medical condition or disability. What if you weren't able to tell them that your child was nonverbal or that you were a diabetic? Hello everybody, I'm Karen Holiday, And I'm Kimmy Olmstead and our company is K2 Medical Alerts. This is my son Jonah and this is Karen's son Ryan. For 15 years we've been raising our sons both of whom have severe autism. Instead of being on the sidelines of sporting events and teaching them how to drive, we're teaching them how to brush their teeth and tie their shoes. Um, 
they're unable to cross the street alone or be home unattended without 24-hour supervision. Dreams of college and families of their own have been shattered by autism. We spend every day trying to figure out ways to keep them safe and to protect them from things that they don't understand are dangerous, things that they have no control over. Last year, my son Jonah and I were almost hit by another driver who ran a stop sign entering the highway. That split second could have changed everything for us. We could have been seriously injured or worse. I couldn't get the thought out of my head that how would law enforcement know his name since he doesn't speak? How would they know how to help him when he can't even tell them who to call to help him? That, those things cross our minds all the time. So we wanted to do something because of the love of our sons. We wanted to create something that would give us peace of mind and also have other people that have disabilities and medical conditions that affect their lives and help first responders at the same time. We began talking to law enforcement and doing research. We found cases across the country where there were people with medical conditions like epilepsy, autism, and diabetes were being arrested and tasered. Their medical conditions were being mistaken for drug and alcohol situations. Those mistakes should never happen. Those are mistakes law enforcement don't want to make. Our product is called the Alert for Special Assistance Program, also known as ASAP. We have been working over a year on our ASAP kit with the guidance of law enforcement and first responders who all said make it simple. So that's exactly what we did. The first thing that law enforcement does when they approach an accident or a vehicle in distress is they check the back license plate. So it was suggested to us that we design a frame that would um, recognize our program. So from the back of the vehicle, police automatically will know ASAP, somebody in the car has a disability or disease. From the front of the vehicle is a horizontal decal that's placed inside the driver's side windshield. So whether EMS or police approach from the front or back, they know where they need to look. Inside the glove box, in an adhesive back pocket will be an ID card that our customers will complete themselves, medical information, emergency contact information, everything EMS and police need to know, and a photo on the back. Laminate it, stick it in that pouch, and it's not going anywhere because it's stuck in that door. From your home, we have another component to this, which is the vertical decal that just goes on the outside of your front door, immediately alerting police and EMS that right inside that same door is another pocket with another ID card. So they don't have to hunt for anything in your house and they don't have to hunt for anything in your car. Um, this grant would enable us to purchase more components to make more ASAP kits, purchase two computers, rent off the space since right now we work between Karen's house and mine, and do marketing. Our goal is to get this across Iowa and across the country. Nationwide recognition of ASAP. So, we spent the last several weeks talking to law enforcement. We need to make sure that they know what it is before we can get it out to the people. So the Iowa State Sheriff's Association shared it with all 99 county sheriff's departments in Iowa. All of the blue squares are the law enforcement um, and fire departments that we've spoken to personally, and the yellow um, part of Iowa State Patrol and Illinois State Police, all of whom like it, are sharing it with their officers and adding it to their training. Our kits cost $25, and as our business starts to grow, we'll be able to employ people to help us with our packaging and shipping. The potential for growth is enormous due to the millions of people in this country with disabilities or medical conditions that this product can help. We have future products in the process as we speak. We are part of the population we will serve. We have the same concerns and fears. It's important to us to be part of making a difference, to be part of making things better the value of our ASAP program is peace of mind. Thank you.
Thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, sun's going down. There's still events to be held here later this evening, so make sure that you refer to your schedule for that. Thank you so much for your attention so far. We've got four down. We've got two to go at this point. Now we have Upcraft Club representing the professional services industry category. Welcome to the stage. Every single month, 
And to date, we have sold thousands of patterns and have customers in all 50 states and in 44 countries around the world. This kind of reddish orange color is where all of our customers are located. And the money that they're spending on sewing patterns right now is coming right back here to Iowa. Customers really love what we've built. Now I'm the founder and the owner of Upcraft Club. I myself am a sewing pattern designer. And so I know this industry very deeply. I also am an experienced entrepreneur. I have scaled and sold a company in the past. Levi Russell is a technical advisor. And then not pictured here is a group of women working behind the scenes to acquire new patterns into the site. They sew them, certify them, and they create content. So what will we do with the money if we win Dream Big Grow here? First is to upgrade our website. We're a technology company, and so the technology is very important. Then hire more people. I need six more pattern acquisition people that can go out and find great content, great patterns, and certify them. And all of that goes to executing our fabric store strategy. Fabric stores cannot get this in their hands fast enough. They want it like yesterday. And one of the largest distributors to fabric and craft stores in the country wants to put this as their main product in 10,000 stores across the US and Canada. So the Dream Big Grow Here money will really help us accelerate that growth and meet that demand. I invite you all to check out upcraftclub.com today. Whether you sew or not, it's still a cool place to come see. And I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for letting me dream big and grow here. Rob, I've got a question for you. What are all of the companies that are in the little bubbles up here, the windows and the walls? Let's see, we have Shuttleworth, we have the Iowa City Downtown District. I see a bit of American Energy in a American, yeah. Yep. Technology Association of Iowa, we have uh, IA SourceLink. UPS. UPS, yeah. Good UPS fan in here. Nice. Rockwell. Yeah. Looking around, are, are, these funders, is, are these funders, Creative these Mellon. people fund this? Is that what they do? Here's uh, Northwestern Mutual, mm -hmm. Brown Winnick, iHeart Media, hey, Midwest I One, Iowa SBDC, <laughs> IADG, Iowa Area Development Group. So these people help fund this. They make it all possible. Dream Big Grow here. Yeah, Wonderful. yeah Thank pretty you amazing. Very much. Thank you very much to all the sponsors. Now, last but not least, we have Farm Table Delivery who will give our final pitch of the evening for the Retail Wholesale Industry Category. and I'm the owner of Farm Table Delivery, based out of Harlan, Iowa, and we're a food hub. We distribute, aggregate, and deliver locally grown products to hospitals, schools, restaurants, and grocery stores. How did we get here? In 2010, I got married and moved to my husband's family farm. I quickly saw the need for locally grown products or produce in my county. So I started a vegetable business. We became successful very fast and started selling our produce to grocery stores and restaurants in Omaha. Xavier came along and things changed a little. When he was eight months old, I had to deliver over a thousand ears of sweet corn to grocery stores and restaurants in Omaha three times in one week in my Mazda, with Xavier in tow. So I'd put him in the baby carrier, load the, carry the vegetables to the grocery stores and restaurants. And did I mention I did that three times in one week? My husband said, Ellen, you can't do that any longer. You have to find another way. So I did. 
Three months later, I found a different way and started collaborating with other area farmers in my neighborhood. I started distributing and delivering their products. We even rented a truck. July of 2014, we launched a Kickstarter and raised $25,000 to purchase a refrigerated truck that we call Rita. <laughs> Ever since we invested in that piece of infrastructure, we've been able to expand our business. We now can serve more farmers across the state and into eastern Nebraska. We can carry more products like milk, yogurt, cheese, butter, meat, more produce, pallets worth, fruits, and even shelf-stable products. Safely and efficiently with our truck. We now work with lots of buyers providing high quality, value priced, local products. That's safely, because we have the refrigerated truck. We work with places like Gateway, New Pioneer Co-op, Wheatsfield, Hy-Vee's, Fairways, The Cheese Shop, Hawk, and even schools and, schools and hospitals. Every time we invest in a piece of infrastructure, our sales grow. In September, we got Rita, in April of this year, we moved into a 4,500 square foot warehouse. With this warehouse, we're going to be offering more services for farmers, like post-harvest handling. And our dream, a certified commercial kitchen. This certified commercial kitchen will fill a void in Iowa because they're not very accessible and they cost lots of money. It will add value to farmers' products. They can rent the kitchen, which we will receive revenue from, and expand their product line as well as ours, expand their sales and cash flow as well as farm table deliveries, and this also can be used as an incubator space. Let's say that you want to make your Aunt Betty's famous grape jelly. You can rent this space, process it, package it, and farm table delivery will market it to grocery stores and all the other accounts that we work with. It can also be used as a commissary kitchen for food trucks or people who want to incubate and start their own business, maybe test out some products, maybe somebody wants to add value to their farmer's market stand. It really is going to have huge economic impact and create lots of jobs, not just with our business, but with others. I have a degree from Iowa State University in rural sociology, so I really understand what it takes to make a community sustainable. There are a lot of pressures on local growers because of our current agriculture system. And farm table delivery is the first of its kind in the state of Iowa, providing infrastructure support and services to help make their businesses more viable, scale up, and make a living. Take farmers, or lots of farmers have off-farm jobs, so we have them farm full-time. Full -time. Winning this award will have immediate impact on the local food system in Iowa and rural communities. Thank you. Thank you everybody for your attention uh, this afternoon and this evening. Uh, encourage another round of applause for everybody who's taken the time and effort for themselves as well. That this room comes right up along with them because what you do on a daily basis as far as innovating and doing what you do, the, the sacrifice that goes into is a, it, this is amazing. Uh, I'm going to add, add the judges are done. With this program, I'm going to ask the judges to follow Chelsea out of the room so that you can take your time to deliberate and discuss the finalists that you've seen up here on stage. Um, while they're doing that, I would say that we're probably going to take a, about a 20 minute break, grab something to eat, grab yeah. something to drink. You have a few more things to say. Two more things? Yes, I do. You're right. And I believe that. Right. Okay. Now, in addition to that, what I need you to do is vote for the People's Choice Award using Guidebook, okay? Right up here, Valerie's put a page that says Open Guidebook, click on Schedule, 
click on Dream Big Grow Here Finale Reception, and then click on Live Poll to Vote, okay? Use that app because that's going to be the People's Choice Award through that. About 20 minutes from now, we'll be coming back here and we will reveal not only the People's Choice Award, but the winner of the $10,000 grand prize from the Dream Big Grow Here Contest.
Can I have everybody's attention, please? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The judges are deliberating, and if you're curious about what uh, happens after somebody wins the Drink Big Grow Here contest, we've got a video for you of last year's winner, and she's one of the judges, Deb Vandergast, to present to you. So pay attention to this. gives you an idea of the kind of change that this competition and you all can affect in people's lives. And adaptive daycare started almost nine years ago out of a need because my own child had had a health emergency in daycare that went unrecognized that nearly cost her her life. I was faced with a career decision of meeting my child's needs or keeping my career as a nurse. And instead I chose to combine my two careers as a nurse and preschool teacher and open a daycare for children with special needs. Though it's a special needs daycare, it's for all children. I'm adapting to all their needs. And my approach with these kids is don't focus on their disability. Focus on their abilities. The progress that these kids make in this kind of environment is fantastic. Being the cook and the cleaner and the bookkeeper and the nurse and the teacher and the housekeeper is a lot of work for one person. And I'm doing this up to 14 hours a day. Green Big Grow Here is an opportunity for Iowa small business owners to compete online for votes for their business street. Ten regional finalists compete at the Green Big Grow Here statewide pitch off for a chance at ten thousand dollar grant The coaching session really helped, and I got home and was just like, okay, I got to get in my computer. I got to write down these ideas before I forget them. to tonight's Dream Big Grow Here statewide competition. We are so happy all of you are here. Can't just express enough how exciting this event is going to be. All of the 10 contestants are just amazing and have such wonderful stories. In every single case, it's very obvious that they're very passionate about what they do. They've uh, sacrificed a great deal. Uh, and they all are going to be able to go back to their respective communities and have a great impact. Mrs. B, as she is affectionately referred to by her children, is changing lives and providing a much needed service for the entire Quad Cities area. So let's give a loud welcome to Deb. You know, I get up there and I'm nervous, but I'm sitting off to the side behind the screen and I can see my kids, my daycare kids, my own daughters. I just love having them all there to share that moment with me. I found that there are many families in my area that have children with special needs and that they were struggling to find care for their children. So I opened Tipton Adaptive Daycare in my home. Nine years later, that daycare is outgrowing my home and I'm ready to take it to the next level. Two years ago, we purchased this abandoned commercial building to expand the daycare. The building had to be completely renovated to bring it up to code and make it usable for daycare. Half of the building has been renovated and the first two classrooms will open next month. We plan to use the grant money to complete three more classrooms in the other half of the building. This $15,000 really is what's That is in the script, so yeah, fabulous. Thank you so much for your attention. Everybody, would you please come back up here if you'd like to take your seats because every, this is kind of like church, you know? Uh, there's nobody in the front row, but you want to be up here to rush the stage once you find out everything, right? You know what, this is the second year in a row this has been here in Iowa City. The Angler Theater has been a phenomenal place down here on the pet ball, just in it incredible day today. I think I got more exercise walking around today than I have in the past month. It's been so enjoyable. Let's have a round of applause for our hosts here in the city of Iowa City. It's Keystone Cops up here. Do something visual, all right? Um, before we get going here, I do want to remind all of the winners for tonight 
uh, all the grant award winners, please stick around because we're going to have pictures and information on next steps and uh, not our big announcement. And here is the $10,000 grant prize award. And uh, you know what? I. And you've got plaques too, but you know what? I, I know that you've worked hard. I know you've worked really hard to do this, judges, but I figure there's got to be a way to do this so that each one of them can get a little something. So I'm going to tear off this and that's not the check, don't <laughs> Let's start off with the People's Choice Award, okay? Rob, you want to be over here for this? And the winner of the People's Choice Award is How Factory. $10,000 grant prize award winner, How Factory. Startup meetup at the Startup Lounge, hosted by Soft Layer, or head on over to the Work Hard, Play Hard Fashion Show and Cocktail Hour here at Hotel Vitro. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to the 2015 Dream Big Road Here Great Finale. We look forward to seeing all of you next year. To our Dream Big Road Here Great recipients, please stick around, all of you, for a few minutes for some pictures and some final instructions. Please drive carefully and remember. Dream big, grow here in Iowa. Thank you to you and I, the University of Iowa and Iowa State University. Thank you.
Look, no matter where you're at in starting or growing your business, there will always be challenges. Like, where do you go for help? Hmm, the internet? Your peers? Your friends? It's just information. Lots of information. Introducing the Center for Business Growth and Innovation at the University of Northern Iowa, providing you with the right resources to fit your specific needs. There's free one-on-one -on -one consulting and advice, free business intelligence and market research, strategic growth planning, free interactive webinars, capital opportunities, subsidized office space, networking and learning events, web resources, and so much more. There's even a platform to voice your opinion about doing business in Iowa. Our team philosophy has always been to listen to the entrepreneurial community. Imagine what we can do to fill the gaps in their needs. Then create shareable and collaboratively driven solutions leveraging our technology and university assets. Annually, we evaluate how we've done and strive to scale those resources that are effective to maximizing economic impact for Iowa entrepreneurs. The Center for Business Growth and Innovation, serving Iowa entrepreneurs and small business owners across the state. Contact us today to start working on your business.